Okay, so yesterday we didn't get the mole equation, right? So let's look at a mole equation question. Oh, sorry, missed that. Okay, messed that up. How many moles of sodium sulfide are in 250 grams? All right, what did the question give me here? Actually, I don't need that anymore. Okay, well, it actually didn't give me moles. It's asking for how many moles. Oh, yeah, sorry, molar mass, the ability to get molar mass. Right, big M. Okay, since it, the, the compound involved was written in word form, is it important that I know how to drop and swap? Yes, because if I don't drop and swap and write this formula correctly, I'm not going to get the right molar mass. I'm going to get the rest of the question wrong. So sodium sulfide is NaS. This is a minus 2. This is a plus 1, so it's actually Na2S. All right, to calculate molar mass then, I find the molar mass or atomic mass, sorry, of uh, sodium, which is 22.99, and multiply it by 2 because there are two of them. And then I add that to the molar mass or atomic mass, sorry, of uh, sulfur, which is 32.07. Okay, so that's going to give me... Seventy-eight point oh five grams per mole, and the other thing they told me was the mass is two hundred and fifty grams. So they told me little m. All right, the formula for the mole equation n equals little m over big M. I know both of these. I don't have to manipulate two hundred and fifty divided by seventy-eight. 3.2 moles. Okay, that's as simple as the mole equation questions get. Questions on that one? All right. Try that one. I'll give you a couple minutes on that one. Whoops, can't do it. All right, in this question, my givens are N, the number of moles, 11, and they told me the material so I can calculate the molar mass. It is dinitrogen hexafluoride, so N2F6. So we'll have 14.01 times two and 19.00 times six to give us our molar mass. So 14.01 times two plus 19 times six is 142.02 grams per mole. All right, the mole equation sets up to calculate number of moles. I already have that, I wanna calculate M. Remember when you first looked at this formula and went, oh, math is so hard. Now you look at this, okay, and it's like, oh, man, I can manipulate that. No problem because it's so easy. Okay, multiply both sides by big M. Big M comes over here. Okay, so to calculate little m, we're going to go 142.02 times uh, our 11 moles. And we get 1,562.22 grams. All right, is that ringing a bell for everybody? All right, try this one, write it down. How many molecules of calcium chloride are in 175 grams? What do we have to do different with a question that asks or gives molecules? You gotta remember to use Avogadro's number. Okay. So in this case, my first step 
is to calculate the number of moles. Once I have the number of moles, I can multiply by Avogadro's number because Avogadro's number is the number of molecules in one mole. All right, so my givens are mass, 175 grams, and they tell me that it is calcium chloride, which is CaCl2. All right, so that's gonna mean 40.99, no, 40.08, what am I saying? Oh, wait. A times, or sorry, not times, plus chlorine, which is 35.45 times 2. Should give us 110.98, is that right? Yeah, per mole. Okay. N equals mass, 175 grams over molar mass, 110.98 grams per mole, which will leave us with moles. So 175. Okay, is 150, well, sorry, 1.58, we'll say. All right, of course, remember on a test, do you want to keep all of your numbers? Yeah, yeah till the very end, then you round. So I'm just writing, it's, you know, there's other numbers here. Okay, now I have to take that to calculate the number of molecules equals N times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So that'll be 1.576 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All right, so take that number and multiply by Avogadro's number, 6.02 E23. All right, so I have 9.49 times 10 to the 23. molecules. Okay, pretty all right with that. Yes? Um, there's either an EE button or an EXP button. Yep. All right, there's only four ways for me to ask a mole equation question. I've done three. Okay, so here's the last one. Okay, so we are looking for the mass of 2.5 times 10 to the 24 molecules of hydrogen chloride. If I want to be able to calculate mass, I need number of moles and molar mass. Well, I can calculate molar mass right now because they told me it was hydrogen chloride, which is HCl. Okay, obviously I wouldn't do that on a test, but we're trying to save some time here. Okay, 1.01 is the mass of hydrogen plus 35.45 should give us 36.46 grams per mole. Is that right? I think so. Okay. Um, so now, now that I have that, I can't use it yet because I don't have the number of moles. How can I get the number of moles if I know the number of molecules? Divide by Avogadro's number. All right. So N is going to equal our 2.5 times 10 to the 24, the number of hydrogen chloride molecules we have, divided by the number of molecules in one mole, Avogadro's number. Whoop. All right, so we're looking at 4.153 moles. Okay, so now that I have that, I can manipulate the mole equation to solve for mass. So N times big M, that's going to be 4.153 times um, our molar mass, which we calculated to be 36.46 grams per mole.
So 151.41 grams. All right. Ringing a bell for everybody. Yeah? Okay. Anything I haven't covered that you would like me to go over from chemistry? It's on the back. That, so you get a data sheet, essentially. The data sheet is a periodic table on one side, formulas and special numbers like heat capacities and stuff on the other. Yeah. Okay. And don't keep that when the exam is done. I want to save copies and give them to my Science 10 students next year. Well, you can write on them. If you need to write on them, write on them. But. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, I talked about that yesterday. Remember, I said I'll give you a reaction. You'll have to tell me which of the products are soluble. Right? So, yes, you will have to use the solubility chart. The solubility chart on your final exam looks a little bit different than that one, but works the same way. Now, this is important. In the one that's on your final exam, instead of listing all of the elements, it'll say uh, group one. Okay? So the solubility chart will go, it'll still have the same structure. Okay, and it'll say, uh, like, it'll have the ion up here, and it'll have, uh, like, very soluble, okay, or not soluble. Uh, and then in here, it'll say, you know, like, for very soluble, it'll say group 1A, group 2A, or whatever, right? Well, that's referring to columns on the periodic table, okay? Just whatever the Roman numeral is, that's the number on the top of the column. Okay, so if it says group two, it's this column, or sorry, this column. Group one is this column, group two is this column, okay, and so on. So that, that's all you need to look for. If it just says a group number, groups are columns on the periodic table. Probably you learned that in grade nine, at least you were supposed to. So I just kind of assumed you knew that already. Oh, uh, a, are, a are the representative elements. B are the transition elements. Transition elements are down in here. I'm not going to have any transition elements in any of those. Mine will all be representative elements. Right, so it'll be like from this column or this column or something in here that we use all the time. Yeah. Okay. Why are some of the? Oh, um, again, these are um, these are going to be. If it's a B group, then it's what we call. Um, these are going to have more than one possible charge, so they're not a representative element for that reason. Okay, a representative element represents every time. Okay, it's always the same. Okay, you know that it's going to behave in a similar way. If it's a B group, then the possibility is it could behave in one way or another, right? But it'll say group 2A, group 2B, or whatever. It'll just, you'll know to look in those. Okay, uh, the problem is your periodic table just has the numbers. So just go by the numbers. Okay? If the numbers are good enough, they'll get, you, they'll get it done. Okay. Okay, other questions? Thanks for bringing up that solubility chart. I would have totally forgot about that. Um, can you go over some basic properties of compounds? Okay, so basic properties of compound stuff would be like the examples I gave you yesterday. Um, a, a question would be like, you have a red crystalline solid that is soluble in water, uh, conducts electricity when dissolved, and is a pH of five. Possible identities are hydrogen chloride, cobalt two nitrate or whatever right so just it's just that kind of stuff so make sure you go over that lesson and remember things like the three special colors blue red and green uh, and then the other properties something conducts electricity in solution it's ionic if it's uh, a clear solution um, that's not conductive then it's a then it's a molecular element or molecular compound sorry okay yeah okay what else guys That's frightening. Okay. Uh, also, guys, on Monday, so we've got okay, um, dinitrogen hexafluoride, which is a molecular compound. So we use the prefixes to figure out what the formula will be. N2F6. All right. Then we can calculate its molar mass. So we'll go 14.01 times 2 plus 19.00 times six. 
Okay, those are the numbers that are on your guys' periodic table. Obviously, it's different up there, but okay, on your periodic table, those are the numbers. Um, okay, so we have our 14.01 times 2 plus 19 times 6 gives 142.02. Okay, now that I have that, and sorry, that's in grams per mole, okay, now I can calculate M. But to do that, I've got to manipulate the mole equation, which when you first looked at having to do that back in September, you were like, oh, no, I can't do math. Now you look at that and go, <laughs> that's so easy, okay, because you guys have manipulated way harder formulas than that in physics, and now you're the masters of algebra. Yes, you are. Okay, all right, so we're gonna multiply both sides by big M to bring it over here, okay, and we've got our formula. So that'll be 142.02 times the 11 moles that they gave us in the question, okay. Gives us 1,562.22 grams. How important are units? Very, okay. Important enough to be worth a mark. If you forget them, it'll cost you one. Okay, you don't want to do that. That one ringing a bell, looking familiar? See some people shaking their head no. Okay, um, so if it's not looking familiar, that's something you should probably come in and see me about. Okay, because we definitely need to go over those. There's two of them on the final exam. All right. When you have a question that either asks about the number of molecules or gives the number of molecules, you will have an extra step involving Avogadro's number, right, okay? Remember that Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That is the number of molecules in one mole. All right, so for this one, we'll just walk through it together, okay? How many molecules of calcium chloride are in 175 grams? So they tell us the mass. 175 grams. They tell us the material. It's calcium chloride, which is CaCl2. So uh, calcium is 40.08, and chlorine is 35.45, and there are two of them. Okay, that should give us 110.98 grams per mole. Okay. If I'm going to calculate the number of molecules, I need to get N first. Okay, What am I going to do with N once I have it? I'm going to multiply it by Avogadro's number, because Avogadro's number is the number of molecules in one mole. If I multiply by how many moles I have, that'll tell me how many molecules I have in total. All right, so I've got to calculate N, and N equals little m over big M. So that'll be our 175 grams divided by 110.98 grams per mole. Okay, so we're looking at 100 and, well, 1.576, whatever. Okay, we got, sh should I keep all of those? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna write them all down, but I'm gonna keep them all in the calculator. Okay, so uh, we'll go 1.576 dot, 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 moles. Okay, now I'm going to take that number and multiply by the number of molecules in one mole, and that'll tell me how many molecules I have in total, okay, which is right there. I guess it didn't erase that part. Okay, so we've got okay, our 6.02 here times N, so that's 1.576 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So to keep all of my decimals, which is what I want to do, I'm going to go just answer multiplied by, in brackets, 6.02. Remember, Avogadro's number does need to be in brackets, like that. Okay? And that gives us 9.49 times 10 to the 23, okay? which we see there. Okay, everybody all right with how that one worked? Hopefully that's looking at least a little bit familiar to you. Okay, try that last one. What's the mass of two and a half times 10 to the 24 molecules of hydrogen chloride? 
Okay, so the final exam package, basically it's got a little bit of everything. And most of these used to be on the final exam. They just, I don't use them anymore. So they're exactly like what would be on there. I told you the first written response question is a balancing question. These three were once the first three questions on a final exam, right? Fill in the blanks. These are the numbers. So the answers are all on there. Okay, if you want to check and see if you're doing them right, Okay, everything is in there for you to check, except for instant where it says detailed summary. I didn't bother writing a detailed summary. I figure you guys can just look that stuff up. Okay, uh, and then a couple more here. Identify the type of reaction, predict the products, etc. cetera. Okay, um, and then there's some stuff on bio in there as well. So my suggestion would be is to open that up and maybe get started on working on some of this chemistry review. And then if more questions come up, ask, I'm here to answer. Okay, so if we are balancing, let's just say we've got a reaction that looks like this. Um, okay, so we've got a synthesis reaction where sodium is reacting with nitrogen to produce sodium nitride. Okay, um, I always want to balance what's in the largest number as long as it's not a combustion reaction, which I balance alphabetically, I'll do one of those after, okay? So I'm gonna start with, with uh, sodium because it's present in the largest number. There's three over here and there's only one over here. If I put a three here, that balances my sodium, but it doesn't work with nitrogen, agreed? Okay, so I'm gonna take that away and say, all right, that time going with the biggest number didn't work. I'm gonna put a two here to balance my nitrogens. Okay, sometimes you have to kind of guess and check, go back and forth, right? So, sorry, there should be a three there still. Okay, so two times three is how many? Six, so I go back over here and I put six in front of here. Okay, we can always put in big numbers, we can't change the small numbers, is the thing to remember about balancing. Okay, um, and then combustion reactions have a special set of rules. So if we have um, C6H14, Reacting with, right, with oxygen, let me leave a little space there. That's gonna give us carbon dioxide and water. What do I balance first in a combustion reaction? Yeah, I balance alphabetically, right? So I balance carbon first and six is an even number. So I also have to apply the second rule for combustion reactions, which is the rule of two, okay? If you have an even number of carbons, start with a two. 2 times 6 is 12. So I've got to go over here and make sure I've got 12 carbons. 2 times 14 is 28. i got to make sure I've got 28 over here. 14 times 2 is 28. And that's the way it always works, right? It's always that pattern. Okay, um, now I've got to balance my oxygens. Over here, I've got 12 times 2 is 24 oxygens plus another 14, okay, for a total of 38. So there are 38 oxygens on that side. What times two will give me 38? You guys need to work on your times tables. 19 times two is 38, okay? Does that sort of make sense? Okay, and then if you had a replacement reaction, those can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Let's say we've got, um, Okay, so we got a double replacement reaction here. We got ionic compounds all around. We've got one sodium on this side, one sodium on that side. So, so far sodium looks okay. Okay, uh, what's present in the largest number here? Yeah, two of them, either nitrate or fluoride. Probably doesn't matter which one I start with. All right, I'll start with nitrate just because it's more complex. So nitrate, there's two nitrates over here, but there's only one nitrate over here. Remember, this three is part of the nitrate ion. It doesn't mean there are three nitrates. It means there's three oxygens in one nitrate, okay? Nitrate is NO3. That's why I picked one with a polyatomic ion, just to kind of review that, okay? So there's one over here, and there's two of them over here. So I need to put a two in front of that compound. 
When I do that, it gives me two sodiums. So I have to go back over here and I have to balance my sodiums by putting a two there. When I put the two there, it gives me two fluorine atoms. So I got to go over here. Fluorine's already a two over here. That's a good sign. There's one magnesium here and there's one magnesium here. So now this is balanced. Is that ringing a bell? Other questions? All right. On uh, Wednesday, I put the final exam review package on Google Classroom. So it's in the stream. Uh, sorry, not in, yeah, it's, it's in the stream for January 11th. Okay, final exam review package. So the, the top, whoops, can't have that on right now. And so it's uh, right here. Okay, so it's not very far down. Just click on that, and this is what you'll see. Science 10 final exam review. So there's some chemistry questions there with the answers. Uh, same with the balancing here. And these used to be final exam questions. Like these three here, they were the three balancing questions I told you your written response started with like five years ago. Right? So they're exactly like what I'm going to ask on the uh, final exam. The numbers for balancing are filled in there. All the answers are on in bold. So you can look for those, except for answers that say write a detailed something. I didn't write a detailed something. You can do that. For the, the uh, reactions here, same thing. And then there's some prediction ones, some more balancing, and then it moves into biology with cell diagrams and such. So I would say if there's no questions right now, uh, start working on this. And then if more questions come up, just ask, and I'm happy to answer them for you.